It's 4.30 on WKYT This Morning. Crews spend hours fighting a late night fire at a Menifee County strip mall. The cause of the fire right now under investigation. The Wildcats are back in action tonight. They'll look to continue their winning streak against Tennessee. That team beat them earlier this month. And a team of Lexington firefighters planning to honor a fellow firefighter during the halftime of tonight's game. This is WKYT This Morning. Hey, good morning. Welcome into WKYT This Morning. I'm Bill Bryant. I'm Rebecca Smith. Let's get a look at what's happening with the weather. It really is feeling like it's a little more mild out yeah, there. Yeah, I think some improvements are on the way, right, Micah? Yeah, that looks like it's going to be the case. As we continue to track off into the afternoon hours, we're going to be holding on to temperatures there in the 40s. So we're going to be seeing some really nice temperatures and actually a pretty nice day with a mixture of sun and clouds. Now we go through the day and watch these clouds start to just dwindle away. Hopefully we can get them on out of here and actually get full blown sunshine. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Right around freezing this morning, we get into the afternoon, we'll be right around 45 degrees. We'll talk all about how high we go from there because this isn't even the warmest temperature in your forecast. I'll have that coming up. All right, a forecast to look forward to, and we do that. Thank you. Well, those living in a part of town say smoke could be seen from miles away. A large fire tore through a Menifee County shopping center, destroying some of the businesses there. It happened about 11 o'clock, uh, about 7 o'clock last night at the trademark. On Main Street in Frenchburg. First responders from three counties were called in to assist with the fire. WKYT's Garrett Weimer has more on the story. Firefighters say when they got here, flames were coming through the roof. It stayed that way even after the roof collapsed. As you can see, we have uh, we have fought this best we can, and it'll probably end up being a total loss for the trademark. Several people who live nearby told me off camera it was a popular spot and even had pretty good food. The fire chief says the convenience store was open at the time, but thankfully everyone got out okay. The owner of the Army Navy surplus store next door watched as his business too went up in smoke. He tells me his shop is badly damaged, but crews tried to save as much of his stuff as they could. The fire chief says the laundromat, also in the plaza, does not appear to be damaged. We'll continue to, to fight this fire to uh, save as much property and equipment here as we can and hopefully have no injuries. Chief Back says they turned the power off to the building, which automatically cuts off the gas pumps. So he says that was not a concern. But firefighters were on the scene for hours to finish the job. A fire so big, it took crews from several counties to do it. I want to thank Montgomery County and uh, Bath County for assisting us with this uh, situation. In Menifee County, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. And firefighters say the cause of that fire is still under investigation right now. Road crews are still struggling to clean up a mudslide on a Rockcastle County road. They closed US 25 near Highway 909 yesterday morning when mud just really just slid onto the roadway there. Yesterday afternoon, they had nearly all the mud removed when more debris just barreled down. At one point, they were able to reopen a lane, but they had to shut down the entire road again last night. State transportation crews say they're not sure how long that road will be blocked. Police think a masked man who robbed a pizza store at gunpoint could be behind some other robberies in central Kentucky. Georgetown police say the thief robbed the Domino's on Broadway around 2 o'clock yesterday morning as it was closing. They say the employees inside followed his orders before he ran off with some money. Georgetown police now plan to increase patrols in the area, and the store's owner said he'll be adding some new security equipment. It's not cheap, and it really makes you reevaluate the business, but Anything you can do for the safety and security of your employees is the, is the most important thing. Investigators say the same man could also be behind a robbery at a nearby Dollar General store and a robbery in Lexington. So far, Georgetown police have not made any arrests. A Whitley County pastor says he cannot understand why burglars keep targeting his church. The latest burglary at Oak Ridge Church of God happened earlier this week. In that case, the pastor says the burglars got away with soda, a garbage can, tools, and a ladder. He says in the last 10 years, burglars have broken into the church five times. Very frustrating. Uh, you uh, live in a community that, that uh, you would think would respect the house of God more. The pastor says as far as he knows, police have not arrested anyone for any of the burglaries at the church. He's now thinking about adding new security and possibly closing the parking lot when church services are not being held. 
435 now on WKYT this morning, and animal control officials say that they have rescued two starving dogs from a Nicholasville home. Jessamine County Animal Care and Control says a tip led them to the home yesterday afternoon. They say both dogs were left outside in the cold and were very thin. This is a picture of one of those dogs being treated. Animal control officials say charges are possible in the case. They say the dogs are now in the care of a veterinarian. Officials are asking for donations to help pay for the dog's care. We have more information about that at WKYT.com. Many people in Estill County have been demanding answers for the last few weeks. They want to know the source of a salmonella outbreak that has caused dozens of people to become sick. But county officials, they are asking for patience from the community. They say they're working hard to try and find answers, and the investigation they say is difficult. WKYT's Monique Blair spoke with the county's judge executive for an update. It's a small town, a very small community. Everybody knows everybody. Estill County, so small that virtually everyone knows someone affected by the salmonella outbreak. Uh, I just visited a, one of my employees this afternoon in the hospital that has it. But it being a small county also means it seems the outbreak is what everyone is talking about. You hear a lot of rumors, you hear a lot of a feed, negative feedback. The negative feedback is exactly what the Estill County Health Department says is not helping their investigation, so they're asking the public for patience. Judge Executive Wallace Taylor says he too wants to know what caused the outbreak, but he says blaming people or businesses isn't helping the situation. The blame game goes to nobody. It could be something, young lady, as me ha shaking your hand. Now, Judge Taylor says, unfortunately, another negative effect of the salmonella outbreak has been on the local businesses here in Estill County. The restaurant business was down over Super Bowl weekend, 50 percent. They should have been up 50 percent. Judge Taylor says the community should not panic because he believes whatever caused the outbreak is no longer lingering around. I will not tolerate anything that is unsafe. To the public. I think it's just something that we're just going to have to be patient with, and you know, I hate it for the the people that are suffering from it, but I think they'll be okay. In Estill County, Monique Blair, WKYT. So far, the Estill County Health Department says there have been 51 confirmed cases of salmonella. Once all test results have been returned, the judge's executive thinks that the final number could be more than 100. The Kentucky Senate has passed an education reform bill that calls for some changes in elementary, middle, and high schools. The bill would create a new system to review and change Kentucky academic standards. It would also erase parts of statewide testing and change how teachers are evaluated. The bill would also give school districts more control. For example, districts would be able to address low-performing schools before the state steps in. That's something many school officials say they support. That's something we've advocated uh, strongly for for a long period of time, is that local school districts be allowed to intervene at an earlier stage in schools that they've already identified as having uh, some systemic problem. The bill now goes on to the House for consideration. A rally was held at the state capitol in support of a bill that would protect gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people from workplace and housing discrimination. Eight cities in Kentucky already have similar laws on the books, but House Bill 155 would offer statewide protection. Supporters say passing the bill is the right thing to do. I have a uh, transgender son who came out a little over a year ago, and it just sharpened the issue for me to think of, of the kinds of discrimination and problems he might face in the workplace. The House Judiciary Committee had a hearing on the bill yesterday, but its sponsor, Democratic Representative Mary Lou Marzian of Louisville, said it doesn't have enough votes to pass. She thinks the bill is a few years away from even getting a vote on the House floor. People in Whitley County in southern Kentucky paid tribute to a man who spent decades serving the community. Former Williamsburg Police Chief Chuck Davis died Saturday at the age of 63. He was also once a detective with the Whitley County Sheriff's Office and the county's police chief, as well as an E911 director. Davis's funeral was held yesterday. People close to Davis said he was courageous and loyal. And everything that. I ever do in life, I, I, I hope I do it like he did because he did it with integrity, he did it with honor, um, and he did it with a good heart and a good spirit. In 1991, Davis was recognized as the Kentucky Peace Officer of the Year.
Louisville city officials have found an unusual way to create more Wi-Fi hotspots in the city. They're turning to solar power trash compactors at bus stops. Not only will the trash compactors be able to handle up to five times more trash, they'll also be 4G hotspots. The city of Louisville says they'll have a radius of up to 200 feet. The Wi-Fi will be free at each hotspot. The trash compactors will be rolled out in the coming months. The Wildcats will need to keep up their excellent play of late against the Tennessee Volunteers. All right, it would be a turnaround from the game down in Tennessee. They had that ugly loss in Knoxville earlier this month. John Calipari's bunch has not lost a game since then, riding a three-game winning streak, including a statement win at South Carolina over the weekend. UK will be looking for some payback later this evening. Tonight's game from Rupp Arena will tip off at 7 o'clock, and it can be seen on ESPN. Also happening today, UK athletes Athletics has teamed up with some of Lexington's firefighters to show support for a fellow firefighter who is battling cancer. Lexington firefighter Matt Logsdon was diagnosed last month and he's being treated in Chicago. After hearing about Logsdon's diagnosis, UK Athletics reached out to Lexington firefighter Kyle Branham. Branham says the university offered to let a team of firefighters play a game during halftime of tonight's game against Tennessee. He says they will use that time to promote Logsdon's fight against cancer as well as show him their support. UK also had Nike make some jerseys for the team. They will say UK on the front and hashtag Team Logsdon on the back. And of course, a lot of people are certainly pulling for him. The time this morning is 4.41. WKYT this morning is just getting started. Well, breastfeeding is tough, especially for brand new moms. How technology is making it a little bit easier coming up in today's Moms Everyday Minute. We are looking at it about with temperatures there in the 30s, but let me tell you this, we finally hit the 40s toward the afternoon and even 60s in your forecast. I'll have all that coming up next. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. Well, the good news here is, is that we are looking at and about and not seeing anything fall out of the sky for the first time in a very long time. I've been able to say that. Now, hopefully, hopefully, once we hit the weekend, we can say that once again, but we still have a small chance there toward the weekend. Until then, no real chance at anything falling out of the sky. We're Frankfurt, Lexington, all looks well. Richmond, all the way down toward London. Corbin, uh, we're looking just fine this morning. Temperatures right around 32 degrees, no matter where you are, except for the far northern zones. Look at Frankfurt at 24. It's not a bad reading. Lawrenceburg, that goes for you and work your way over towards, say, Trimble, Carroll, Henry, Owen. Uh, those areas up toward the north and northwest. Reason being is this area right through here is actually picking up uh, some clearing of the skies, and that's allowing us to get much colder than everybody else. So we're going an eight degree swing there from uh, Frankfurt all the way to Lexington. Lexington, more than likely, we're next in line as those clouds just kind of dissipate here in the next couple of hours. By the afternoon, we'll be right around 45 degrees, and you'll have that mixture of sun and clouds. It's going to be a really nice day in store, especially if we can get that sunshine beaming down for a long time. Off toward the evening and into the night, no issues whatsoever. Tomorrow morning, waking up about six degrees warmer than where we are this morning, right around 30 degrees. Much milder as we slide into your weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all three of those days, we're talking upper 50s, lower 60s in the forecast. If you're looking for a chance of rain, when could we have it next? It'll be there on Sunday. A few showers roll on through. Rain showers, not snow showers, but watch this. Winter's just taking a break. We look toward next week. Here comes another system diving in from the south. And like we always talk about with these, pulling in that moisture. So here we go once again, right? Slides to our east and southeast. And that's another setup that we could either pull rain out of this or some snow as well on the back side of it. So it's another setup that we're going to have to watch very closely. And then that cold air just kind of slides on in. There's your seven day forecast starting with today. At 45 degrees, 60s as we slide into Friday and into your weekend. Those showers starting up there on Sunday. You'll have a small, small chance there on Saturday, but for the most part, if you're looking for spotty showers, it'll be Sunday off into Monday. And then that system there on Tuesday into Wednesday is when it gets a little interesting around here. But nonetheless, like we always say, you gotta wait a few more days before you can actually make that call on these. On these situations. Yeah, that last one was really tricky, wasn't it? It yeah. was very yeah. tricky. Uh, hopefully, this one isn't the same. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hope, hope that. Yeah. Maybe a little rain. That'd yeah. be nice, huh? It Four was trickly. <laughs> yeah. Caught that. The rain was real trickly. Yeah. Uh, 447 now. A few words of encouragement can make all the difference in the world when it comes to breastfeeding success. And with the prevalence of cell phones, why not? Um, 
you know, do that through a text, apparently. Here's Pam Tosher with today's uh, Moms Everyday Minute. Even though new moms often know breastfeeding is best for the baby, nursing is not easy, and moms give up for all sorts of reasons, including feeling isolated and frustrated. Research shows that something as simple as a text message could help increase the number of women who breastfeed exclusively, as well as the duration of breastfeeding. In Wisconsin, a brand new personalized text support program aims to help and encourage breastfeeding moms at the crucial times they need it most. I am their breastfeeding friend, their BFF, yeah. and I will answer questions if they're having pain, if they're having trouble with um, breastfeeding itself, mm -hmm. any questions. There's no questions that are off limits. And support them. Absolutely. Encouragement. I am part of their force field to help continue, um, help normalize breastfeeding for them so that they don't feel, um, you know, awkward doing it in public um, because it's just, it's the best thing you can do for your baby. In this program, women can begin getting live support before the baby is born and continue to get texts until the baby is six months old. But research shows that weekly texts that offer simple, automated, supportive messages help improve breastfeeding rates. For these tips and more, go to WKYT.com. Click on Moms Every Day. And right there you'll find the latest news, the weather, and a lot more as well. Good to have you with us on WKYT 449 on your Thursday. GOP candidates speak directly to voters during last night's town hall. More from South Carolina when we return. Name. Welcome back in. 4.52 is our time on WKYT this morning. At the last Republican town hall uh, last night, Ben Carson evoked Hillary Clinton and sided with President Obama. Marco Rubio agreed with Donald Trump and called Ted Cruz a liar. And Ted Cruz also broke out into song, just wrapping it all up. Mary Maloney has the latest from South Carolina. Quite frankly, we have some Struggling to keep his campaign afloat, Ben Carson resurrected a line from Hillary Clinton's 2008 presidential bid. It's 3 a.m. Who do you want answering the phone? I can guarantee you that I've had more 2 a.m. phone calls than anybody else, all the rest of them put together, had to make life and death decisions. Carson broke party lines, claiming if he were in President Obama's shoes, he would nominate a Supreme Court justice in his last months in office, something the president vows to do and Republicans promised to block. I probably would take the opportunity uh, to nominate someone. Marco Rubio slammed President Obama's plan to visit Cuba. They're a repressive regime. He boasted about his campaign's diversity. Diverse endorsements. I got the endorsement of, of a governor of Indian descent who endorsed a presidential candidate of Cuban descent and tomorrow will be campaigning alongside an African American Republican senator. But Rubio called out fellow Cuban American Ted Cruz. Well, I've said he's been lying because if you say something that isn't true and you say it over and over again and you know that it's not true, there's no other word for it. Cruz focused on someone else, Donald Trump, saying Trump's attempts to sue him aren't serious. I'll confess I laughed out loud. But at one point, he softened his stance by breaking out in song. I just called to say I love you. Donald Trump participated in his own town hall on MSNBC and lashed out against the latest NBC News Wall Street Journal poll that gives Cruz the edge. I have never done well in the Wall Street Journal poll. I think somebody at Wall Street Journal doesn't like me. I'm Mary Maloney reporting. That was some good singing from Ted Cruz. There you go. Yeah, I have to tell you, what a year, you know? <laughs> it's been interesting. Yeah, and more, much more to go. Yeah. 454 on WKYT. Coming up next, a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. We'll also have another look at your morning forecast. Good morning. It's 457 on WKYT this morning. Great to have you along on your Thursday. Yeah, I hope it's good for you. Let's take a look at some of the stories we're working on for you this morning. Firefighters are investigating a late night fire at a Menifee County shopping center. Started about 7 o'clock last night at the Trademark Shopping Center in Frenchburg. Firefighters from three different counties were called in to assist with that large fire. Fire officials say some stores were open when the fire started, but nobody was hurt. That's a good thing because yeah. it looked like a, a ferocious fire there. What a mess. And might, let's get a look at the weather. Might Hopefully, get sunshine, you know? <laughs> let's hope so. Let's hope that's not a mess, Micah. Yeah, that's going to be the case later on this afternoon. We'll start to increase that sunshine through the day. We're going to get into that. I'm going to show you a really warm forecast coming up.